Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with Smart Business Moves. I'm with Liz. Good afternoon, Liz. Hello. Okay. And I'm sure that everybody was able to figure out from all of the awesome hints that Liz gave this week that today's special guest for On the Spot is Laura Smith. Hi, Laura. How are you today? Hi. Good. Yay. Good. So, and, and really, we feel really lucky, Laura. We know all of the different things that you're going through, and you don't really just have a lot of time to just be out hanging out and playing around on Facebook. So really, really appreciate that you're taking this time to help the audience here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And if we do this right, hopefully we'll have some fun with it and uh, learn a little bit too. Got a few people jumping on here. Oh, I'm trying to get it right now. You know, it's going to, yeah. So, Laura, can you see where the comments are on your screen? Um, there aren't any right now. Okay. Spot, so you can see them. And when somebody posts a question, Tom will usually copy it and paste it and post it for us so we can read it, which I love for the record, Tom. I don't think I've told you that before. Well, thank you. Hey, Tom, I did need to call you out on something, though. What's that? Why why wasn't an, an unprecedented day yesterday? It, did we get that? We got that in. Oh. We're going to have to go back and look at the video. Yeah. At the end of the day, I was like, oh. Did I blow that? Did we miss it? Did I blow that? Yeah. No. I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you're right. We'll go back and watch. Yeah. We'll All right. Go. So we got Leslie. Hey, Amber, and hey, oh, hey, Leslie. Oh, Laura, I don't think you know this, but can you see my painting behind me? Yes. You can't see how big it is, but it's huge. You see how big it is? Yeah. Leslie gave that to me. She painted oh, it. Oh, that's and, awesome. And I remember that, actually. I was so jealous. Wow. Of that <laughs> I know. I love it. Uh, okay. Tom, you got some ugly stuff to show us, I see. Yeah. This came up yesterday, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just kind of an update. I'm, I'm sure that we've all uh, been been hearing in the news where certain parts of the country are seeing increases in, in, in spread of COVID-19. Uh, this is really a, a, an awesome website if you want to keep up with that. It, it's rt.live. And this RT factor is a measurement for every person who has COVID, how many more people are they infecting? So if you think about the math, if one person is infecting like 1.1 or 1.2 or, or more people. If it's greater than one, then it's spreading. Whereas if that number is less than one, that means that the growth is dropping. And if they keep it below one, eventually it'll go away. Well, all these states here with the green has an RT value of less than one and all the ones in red are greater than one. And week over week, the number of red states gets bigger and the number of green states gets smaller. Um, Nevada is kind of leading the pack here for every person who has COVID in Nevada on average, they're making one and a half people sick. Doesn't mean that Nevada has the, 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 the highest cases or the most cases of COVID, but what it does mean is that it's like accelerating that they're growing fast. fast. And you can kind of go down here and look at, at, at every state in terms of how it was shrinking and now it's growing again, like in Louisiana. Is anybody not going? Yeah, like there's a flat line. Who's that? North Carolina? Yeah, North Carolina's doing okay. South yeah, Carolina is kind of, you know, growing okay. kind of fast here. And you can click on any one of these and get into to more details in terms of the positive tests. You see how the, these numbers keep getting bigger? And this is like going back into May, I guess. I'm, is it is it giving us the number or is it giving us the percentage to the number of tests given? These are the number of positive tests in total. Wow. So the, the increased testing does matter. It really does. But number of positive cases of the country hit 40,000 yesterday, which is, which is a record. Um, 
if you go over here, and this is uh, a site that we've looked at before, the IHME, this is kind of the Bill Gates stuff. And deaths are increasing, and that kind of is independent of the number of tests. If more people are dying from it, then, you know, that's not a, not a good sign. Um, Tom, anyway. can you put that one for us too? I, I lost this one. I used to have it. Or is this one already in the super secret? It is in super secret, but I'll put it out there again. Okay. I, I used, I was watching this one for a while. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I really liked it. Hey, y'all, a lot of people here on a Friday. You're all just excited. Okay, I got to do my due diligence, go watch Smart Business Moves, and then I get to go home, right? Everybody's like, I'm leaving. Oh, Rosemary, <laughs> Rosemary, I could give you a hug. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm watching it. I did. I, 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 I remember. We knocked it out. Yeah, right I there. totally thought that was Wednesday. Totally thought that was Wednesday. But I will... I will give you the benefit of the doubt, Tom, because you are so good at it. Don't, don't, and I, don't. We have said it like 12 times today. Do, do any of these count? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. It definitely, it definitely is an unprecedented time. And, you know, one of the things that we need to be thinking about, and we, we probably need to be, we need to talk about this sometime for, for two, you know, too many days get behind us. We all need to have contingency plans in terms of what are we going to do if if one of our employees tests positive or if they clean a home with uh, someone that's positive. We've talked about it. We've kind of you know pontificated on well these are the things that 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 maybe we should think about and do. But I don't think that we really kind of pounded out. Okay, here is the playbook. So I'll tell you what, Tom, that's one of the questions that I have today um, in my um, MMA group, the success group this morning, one of our team members um, or not one of our team members, one of the members of the group, one of the owners, his employee's husband got COVID and then she worked with another team member and then they cleaned like 12 houses. So. And so the question that I have that's going to be coming up, so you guys can give a heads up, I'm not going to give it to you right now, um, but the question is, what are you doing in your business if somebody comes down with COVID? So you guys can start thinking about what you're doing. Oh, it's seven days and no results. That doesn't sound good. When you don't get results on your on your background checks for a long time, that's bad, right? Like if you don't get them back really quickly, it's like, uh-oh. Is there a correlation with that, really? Yeah, absolutely. It is for us. Uh huh. So you mean if somebody gets tested for COVID, if it comes, if it if it's if it's slow coming back, that that's oh. something. No, I, I don't know about COVID, Tom. I was saying that it, it's like that with your with our background checks. Oh, I was just correlation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know, Caleb. It was. So Caleb's in, in, in that group this morning and he's saying the same thing. It was really sobering hearing that. So we have two, two members of our, the MMA group that have this situation going on right now. So it's, it is kind of scary. Um, so you guys on the spot, um, before we get started, I just want Laura to tell you a little bit about who she is. Um, for those of you that don't know her, if, if there is anybody, I can't imagine that there is. Um, but first, before Laura tells us anything about herself, how about y'all tell me, did anybody guess that the special guest today was going to be Laura? And did, if anybody didn't guess it, where are you guys <laughs> been? Under a rock or something? <laughs> but, uh, it's not a very common thing to 13 people in a day. <laughs> And really, Ocean's Eleven, if, if, if they didn't figure that out, how do I listen? Oh, I'm sorry, Amber. The MMA groups are, a, I shouldn't keep commenting on that. Sorry. It's just such a large part of my life that I bring them up all the time. It's a, um, it's a subscription group. It's a, a paid group. Sorry about that. 
Um, all right. So, Laura, tell us. So, give, give us some, some background, some history. Tell them who you are. Okay. Well, I'm Laura Smith. I own All Star Cleaning Services in Fort, or in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, I've been in business since 2006. We uh, currently have about 45 people on staff. Um, our run rate was about two and a half million before COVID. It's currently back just over two million. Um, so we're we're clawing our way back up. Um, yeah. But yeah, what else? Teams of two and company cars. <laughs> All right, so you know what you could tell them for the people that heard the the hint yesterday are probably freaked out. Anybody that didn't know that you had you fired eleven people in one. Actually, you didn't fire them. It was thirteen. It was thirteen. Oh my gosh! And actually, you didn't do it because you weren't even in town. Nope. Right. So I think that that's a super great story for the people that are like, you know, nobody can run my company. I have to do everything. Go ahead, I don't remember we were together. We were together in a big group, though. Was that like a convention? No, actually, it happened while Derek and I were at Handyman's convention. Okay. Yeah. So I was in Austin when it happened. Um, I had an employee um, send me a copy of a, te a group text thread that was going on. I had some pot stirrers that were pot stirring, and they just started a group thread and just started adding people to it. Um, and they effectively wanted to overthrow my company, which, whatever, people. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's, like it's a coup. It's a coup. Good luck. It's like a government. It's like a coup. Yeah. It, so, yeah it's I, like a coup. Yeah. They show up with like ARs and, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I have an amazing manager, and I called my GM from Texas and said, this is going on, and I sent her all the texts, and, we immediately decided that we needed to show strength. And so we were just going to terminate everybody who had participated in the conversation. Um, Cause they'd actually said at one point in the conversation, they can't fire us all. And I was like, ha, you think? <laughs> <laughs> so my manager actually fired them all um, the next day on a Sunday. Um, and in my business name, uh, Brian is All Star Cleaning Services. Um, but yeah, we- Fort Collins, Colorado. Fort Collins, Colorado. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, didn't, I, didn't I was in Texas the entire time. I asked her if she wanted me to come back. She said, I got this. Um, and she did. She managed the whole thing. So, and also for anyone who doesn't know um, about me, I, my, currently I have a daughter who is going through treatment for leukemia. Um, she got diagnosed in November. And so I had to abruptly step out of my business in November. Um, I had been five days a week in the office before then. Uh, but I was actually also on a plane when that happened. I was on my way to Detroit for a class. And um, when I found out my daughter had been transferred down to Children's Hospital, I got on a plane, turned around and came back. But first I called my GM from Detroit and said, I think they're about to diagnose my daughter with cancer. If that happens, I quit. And she said, of course, of course you do. Like you go take care of it. Um, so that was seven months ago, and I'm actually in my office right now, but this is one of the first times I've been in my office in seven months. Um, so definitely for those people who feel like you you can't, like, you're going to have to always do it all by yourself. You can't get a bigger run your company. Not true. Not true. My GM runs my whole company for me right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I cannot believe that it has been seven months. I know for you, it. It feels probably more like seven years, but yeah. um, it's freaky to me that it's been seven months already. Wow. Yeah. And we're still really super in the thick of it, too. She's actually in the hospital right now. Um, they only let us have one parent at a time because of COVID right now. So I have to switch with my ex-husband every few days. But she's still there right now. She's been mostly in the hospital for the last seven months. So. Well, I also have a Facebook group, you guys, called Love Hope love hope support and prayers where we pretty much everybody in our group is praying for Juno every day so if you want to help you want to join that prayer chain join the Facebook group everybody's welcome um okay let's get to on the spot because I'm gonna start crying and I don't want to cry on on, uh, on, on clean business moves uh our smart business moves all right so who's got a question if you haven't done on the spot before 
uh, you can ask a question and then all three of us are going to answer the question and um, we'll each have one minute to answer the question. You can ask a question about what we do or you can ask the question about what would we do if we were in your situation. So anybody have a question right now? Because if not, I got questions from other people. I've got five. Nope, all right. And uh, you guys come up with your own questions. I'm going to start on the questions that I have that I was already given. All right, so uh, this is the first question I have. Uh, my business is not bouncing back. What should I do? And Laura, I think you're probably perfect to answer this because you guys are bouncing back fast in a really big way. You were closed down and now you're already over that $2 million mark again. I mean, I know that I, I think that's probably gonna be super helpful. Um, do you wanna think about some of your strategies and go um, second or last, Laura, or would you like to just start first? Um, either way, I'm good. I know exactly what we're doing, what so. Are, what are first then, Tom? Okay, you ready to go, Laura? I'm ready. Right. Okay, so we started planning for our reopening um, two weeks before we actually reopened. We spread, put all our clients on a spreadsheet, um, went through, we have had multiple, multiple follow-ups with everyone. We gave them the option to pause or, um, or cancel, but we encourage people to pause instead of cancel. And then we check in with them regularly. Um, so every about two to three weeks as their cleaning would come up, we're checking in with people, um, asking them if they're ready yet, but we're keeping them on our schedule. So that's been a big part of it. We also, um, are calling people who, um, have paused and trying to get them back on. We're running email campaigns, strip campaigns specifically to those people. We also really jacked up our marketing budget to sweep up all the people from companies that are closing and people who've stopped cleaning. Um, that's that's mostly it, just keeping really, really in front of those people. Awesome. You ready, Liz? Yeah, okay. All right, so we did a lot of the same things that Laura did. Um, here are two things that we did that were different. There, there's probably more, but these are the first two that popped into my head. Um, we sent everybody a schedule at the begin, beginning of, um, I, I guess it was April and May and June. And I think they may have already sent out July schedules showing them where they are on our schedule. And just reminding them that they're already on the schedule and we're holding their spot for them. Um, so that was super helpful because I think that that encouraged people to come back sooner. They're like, uh, they kept feeling like they were missing out on their cleaning. The second thing that we did was we told people if they wanted to hold their spot, we were starting to get busy. Um, we encouraged them to book today. And then the other thing that I just remembered is for certain people, we offered what we call a personal protection kit, a PPA, and that got too. <laughs> Very good. For us, I guess there's there's two sides of this equation. Um, in some locations, we have labor. We just don't have enough clients, enough jobs. In other locations, we've got work we can't put on the board because we don't have enough people. So depending on why we aren't coming back, we would influence how we would attack it. Um, we're recruiting aggressively for the for the branches that that we need more help. Um, we furloughed a fair amount of our administrative staff, backroom staff, and we uh, started bringing back everybody that was involved with the recruiting process to help with that. On the sales side, a lot of that was just communication, uh, implementing new practices to be safe with, 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 with PPE and, and communicating that with our clients and keep emphasizing how safe we are and how safe we will make them. And we did what Liz said, and we're starting to take uh, – take people off the schedule if they don't go back on and that fear of loss makes people jump back in. Did I cheat, Larry? I, okay. Three words yeah, so, turn red. So Laura, you remember about Tom, you've done on the spot with us before. And yeah. doesn't he always go over? <laughs> always is a I was ready to go over. I just wanna I just wanna shut up before it gets down to the five second countdown. <laughs> I do have to cut him some slack because we had Elena on last week on Friday 
And her answers were so concise that she made us both feel guilty for even coming close to that 60, <laughs> 60 second mark. We could have backed <laughs> 60 seconds down to 15 seconds and Elena would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, just so concise, no rambling at all. Yeah, she's, she's a rock star. Um, okay, we have a question here, Tom. And this is actually a version of a question I have. You see it? Yeah. What are the pros and cons of having company cars? Okay, so we just want to keep going in circle. You want to go first, Liz? No, but I will. <laughs> I'll be glad to. I'm all over this. I'll go so let's just go in order so that we can keep track. Remember last time we had to get in that big fight and, you know, and then you see gonna, those we're inevitable. We're going to get in the fight over something. You want to make it over this or something else? Um. All right, let's 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 fight over something else. Yeah, okay, well, you're on. Okay, um, pros and cons of company cars. So um, pros, they are, if, if they're labeled or some way, uh, obviously, then they're really good advertising. Um, you never have to worry that your employees won't have cars because you got the cars. Um, you know that they're in good shape because you're taking care of them. Hopefully, you're taking care of them. Uh, you never have to worry about people running out of gas. You don't have to worry about damage to driveways for your employees parking their leaky cars in the driveway. Um, bad stuff. On the bad side, let's see. Well, all the opposite of what I just said. And your employees might not be able to come to work because their cars break down. You might have arguments about whose turn it is to drive. You have to pay mileage. Uh, customers don't like those scary looking cars in their driveways and I'll let those guys go in some others. I am so glad I went first. Okay. Well, everything that Liz said, uh, plus, you know, having company cars gives you the ability to expand your workforce. There's people out there who are qualified to clean homes, but they might not have a car they're on. Uh, they might not even drive, but they can take a bus or have some other means to get to work. So um, for us, that's like one of the big things. Um, you know, the downsides are people wreck cars. And if they wreck their own car, typically people are more careful to own cars. I mean, you can, your, your loss runs in your insurance uh, with, with your automobiles can, can, can really be a big deal. Um, you have to do a really good job of vetting your people to make sure that their their driving records are, are, are clean. There's a lot of administrative uh, headaches, just making sure that they're maintained. It's a lot of work, but the upside is for us, we're able to hire people that we wouldn't be able to hire otherwise. You ready, Laura? And I know, Laura, you guys bought a ton of cars. Like, Bang, all at once, it's like a fleet. How many do you have, Laura? How many do you have? Um, I, when Junior got diagnosed, I had one. I'm pretty sure we wrecked a couple since then. So, <laughs> I mean, you, you bought, you bought like, uh, like, you know how they bring the cars in, like on these big carriers, these like 18, I mean, how many of those? I mean, you bought a ton of cars. Okay. I'm sorry, how many? 17. That is. I don't know anybody that's bought that many cars at one time. I'm gonna well, I remember thinking that was such a weird number. Why not 16 or 18 or 20? Why 17? I had 17 teams at the time. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. <laughs> <Good reason. laughs> All right. So when you walk into the dealer and say, I want to buy 17 cars, what do they say? Oh, they love me. They love me. They said, here's some wine. <laughs> Sit down, let me love your pony. <laughs> yeah, and since then we bought quite a few cars from them as well. And so they love us, um, but they did use it as an opportunity as advertising for them. So we did a big photo shoot um, with all of our cars once they got wrapped in front of the dealership. So, oh, and nice. That's vacation house. They asked us if we would bid the dealership. Like they, they were very, they liked us. <laughs> yeah. And your photo shoot was amazing too. So I bet they love that. Yeah, that was great. All right. Okay, here you go, Laura. Tell us why the pros and cons for having company cars. Okay, so 
I love my company cars. Um, I did buy 17 of them all at once. We went from everybody driving their own vehicles to company cars kind of overnight when we were already very large. The reason that I think that it's worked so well for me is I have a really eye-catching wrap and they're all the exact same car, exact same color, wrapped exactly the same way. So people feel like they see us everywhere. Um, so it's very good for advertising, very good for advertising. I think we saw a 40% increase in leads um, right after we got all of those cars on the road. I do think it works the best when you have multiple cars on the road in a smaller area. My whole service area is only about 250,000 people. So I think that's part of why that works. Um, big downside for us is it is expensive to buy that many cars at once, obviously. Um, and the insurance, like Tom mentioned, we have had, um, some pretty serious accidents. We had one accident that we were at fault with where the lady ended up having a major, um, spinal surgery. I don't like my insurance. You're, you're our guest. Go ahead. Finish the thought. Um, we just, she, she had a multi-level fusion as a result of it. And so, um, we're being sued for like a million and a half dollars or something right now for that car accident. So, um, there's, there's liability to it. And then, you know, make insurance rates go up for forever. But I still, I'm still happy with my choice. So. I, I have one more or two more things if I can add them. Do you guys mind? I'll say really fast. Go ahead. Parking. Think about parking. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> See, you're glad you I had to talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> parking. And they get dirty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had to move because of my cars. So that's yeah. that's a very good one. Yeah. If, also, if you hire really young people, insurance companies don't like really young people. And my average employee yeah. is about 22. So that's been problematic as well. Okay. All right. Cool. Anybody have any? Oh. Yeah. No, it was not the employee who had the accident. It was the person that she hit. Going after the big guns. You know, that's one thing that Tom talks about quite a bit is yeah, as your company grows, you become more of a, a magnet for, for this type of stuff. So, yeah. um, all right. Since we don't have any more questions on there, I'm going to hit mine. Um, so I guess I'll just we can do this one really fast. It's sort of a tag on to that. Um, this person wanted to know cars or no cars. What kind and should I lease or buy? So we can probably do this fast, right? Yeah. What kind of car and lease or buy? And Tom, you're first up on this one. Okay. What kind of car and it could depend upon how many people you put together in teams. You know, if you do three or four person teams, you're going to need a large enough vehicle to carry that many people and all the equipment and, and, and tools. For us, we do two person teams. Uh, our favorite car is a Toyota Corolla. Um, it's a four door sedan. They're relatively inexpensive. Uh, life cycle costing is, is what we look at. You can drive one of those for a couple hundred thousand miles and not have to put a lot of extra money into it. Um, what was the other part of the question? Lease or buy? Um, a lot of that has to do with, you know, do you have money that you can invest in, in vehicles or do you have credit lines where you can actually buy them? Our preference is to buy, but sometimes our credit lines are tight and it makes more sense for us to lease them and save what credit and cash we have for other things. And that was good, Tom. I'm impressed. This is me. Is it my so, I'm a yes for cars. Um, I love cars if you work in teams. Um, we have teams of two. And so we do Chevy Sparks and I love them. Um, they're very small. They will only fit a team of two and their equipment, but they're very cheap. You can get a brand new one for about $10,000. Um, so we also do, when we do training teams, we'll have up to teams of four. So we do have, I think, two or three um, Chevy Cruises for the training teams, but teams two go out in Sparks. Um, and I personally would only buy vehicles. If I couldn't afford to buy another vehicle at that point, I would make one of the teams drive their cars. Um, I'm I'm a big believer in in owning your vehicles. So, 
So she's pulling in Elena right there. Yeah, yeah. Really. you got you got ten seconds here. You want to carry them over for another question, or yes, I think I already yeah. have the last one. So <laughs> that's, that's smart. All right. Um, yeah, I, I'm for buying as well. You like how I start early, so I get a couple extra seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm for buying as well, but I am very cheap. I did not go to the dealer and buy 17 cars. Um, we live in the capital of our state, and so we have a lot of state vehicles, and they have state auctions here. Um, they have to turn over their cars between 60 and 100,000 miles, and so we buy our cars at auction. We tend to buy, we did to write it down, Ford Focuses. Uh, that's my favorite thing to buy. Are you done? Yeah. Elena, are you done? <laughs> I'm keeping my 20 seconds too. <laughs> Thanking them. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? You guys don't have any questions. So here's the deal. I talked to Tom. Was that yesterday I asked you about this, Tom? About the Friday on the spot? Uh, yeah, we talked about Friday and on the spot and just Fridays in general. Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday I told Tom, so here's the deal, Tom. What do you think if we test this on the spot and see how it works, if people are interested and, and send us a lot of questions and we keep doing it, let's try it for a couple, maybe three weeks. And if they don't have questions, how about we just don't do Fridays anymore? We just do four days a week. So y'all get to vote right now. You know how you vote? If you want us to continue doing Fridays, pop some questions on here. If you don't want us to continue doing Fridays and you'd love to have Fridays off, no questions. Uh, all right, so we got. Here's a question. We got Brian. Oh, there's Karen too. Brian wants to know what percentage of a company's budget should be spent on marketing. Let's see, did I go first last time? I think you're we did. in Laura. Yeah, okay. You ready? Yep. I think that that really largely depends on how good your online presence is. Um, personally, I didn't spend almost anything on marketing for years because we just absolutely dominated our area. Um, we were in the three pack at all times. I'm usually the top search on Google. Um, we just completely dominated our area and we had all, I mean, the cars are advertising, honestly, I had to spend money on those wraps, but, um, if you have a really, really strong web presence, especially with Google Map Pack, then I think that you need to spend an awful lot less money. Um, if you do not, then I think 5% is pretty appropriate for growth. Um, it used to be much higher when um, that used to be like kind of the base and you spent more if you wanted to grow uh, back when we were doing a lot more print marketing, but digital is really the way to go now and it's much cheaper overall. So I think 5% would be my max ever. You ready, Liz? I am. You, you sure? I mean, well, like I, well, I agree but with you. You can ask me right now, you know, because um, I'm getting extra time. Yeah. So I agree with Laura. It depends on the company um, and on the, the online presence, and also your um, your um, what's it called? Your real life presence. So if you have 17 cars on the road then you are, you're spending a lot of money on marketing. Uh, I also have somebody, sorry to do this, but in our MMA group that has a, a very large company and he's on a very, very busy road. Laura, you know who I'm talking about? And he has a very distinctive, excuse me, distinctive car wrap and sign. And he gets so much advertising from that that he um, he said, I think he said he spends less than 1%. Caleb, if I got that wrong, let me know. What well, spends less than 1% on marketing, but his cars are his marketing, et cetera. Um, I think average people are spending three to 5%. You wanna grow fast, six or more. I think we have Ben on here. I think he, he pops it up. You still have 10 seconds uh, before if you wanna use them. Guys. No, I, 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 I think yeah. that's good. When it comes to things like marketing, I think it's really hard to talk in terms of percentages because like if you're a new company or a really small company, you may have to spend a lot more than 5% or 10% to move the needle to, to, to generate business. Whereas 
if you're a mature company, as Laura was saying, with with good market presence and and, and really great, you know, SEO and showing up in the map pack, um, you might spend some money, but it's a percentage of your income. It's going to be relatively small. It's all about it's you know it's it, it's it's almost like a fixed cost. What do you have to spend in order to get a a rocking website and to uh, you know rank well on 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 the right keywords and get your social media side of it, you know, working in, in, in the digital space. And um, I don't know if it, it's even useful to put it in terms of percent. Percent really was more of the old days when you were buying newspaper ads and yellow pages. I like that answer, Tom. I wouldn't even have minded if you went over. That was so good. I haven't heard that answer before. That was good. Thank you. Uh, we got can a couple I, of questions. I, you know, it's a beautiful day outside, and I have bait down at the dock. Can I take the rest of the day? No, I'm kidding. I'm good. <laughs> no. I'm having oh, I think people are liking on the spot because they're now they're trying to throw up. Yeah, questions. Okay, Here's a question. No, not that one. I do Karen's right above. Let's not shame him anymore, Tom. Okay, I know Caleb. He enjoys being silly. Yes, he does. Knowing Caleb, that was actually a joke, right? How do I ask it a question? It's definitely a joke. Absolutely a joke. Yeah. He jokes about everything. <laughs> All right. Um, have any of you used a virtual assistant? Why or why not? I, I, I think I'm first up, yeah? I believe you are. Oh, no. Because you, you ended, so it, it would be, yeah, me. Sorry. Oh, oh. Okay. Um. Okay, yes, I have used a virtual assistant. Um, I love them, actually. A um, friend of mine, Maria um, uh, Dorian, um, owns a virtual assistant company. Tom, what's the name of her company? Real Task quick, a couple of seconds. Taskaway. Task and yeah, Taskaway. And I love them because a lot of times I don't need to hire a, a whole nother person and I don't have. Uh, enough work for an entire person, or I just have a project. So sending that over to a VA makes just a ton of sense to me. Um, I don't know why people wouldn't. Uh, I can only talk to why I do, because it it's cost effective for me, way cost effective. And I have better ideas about some things that I can do. I feel more more open to new ideas if I know I don't have to do it. I don't have to find somebody who will be good at it. They already got somebody. I put the uh, link to uh, task away in the chat if anybody wants to know more about them. Um, That's good. This is Thanks, Maria's Tom. website, by the way. Okay. I'm up. Or you use her too, don't you? Yeah. I use VAs. I, I use Taskaway as 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 well. Uh, you know, Maria rocks, and uh, you know she's got a, a number of people that work with her. And you know, it's, it's project work. It's just just stuff that it doesn't make sense to hire a full time person. A lot of times, you can't even find a full time person when you need them. When you've got uh, you know additional work, like we're we're we're, we're acquiring a uh, really large cleaning business in Atlanta, and they're ton of extra work involved and it's, it's going to go away once we once we onboard that business but uh, we're using we're using VAs to help us with uh, getting all the data entry and and you know the communication plan initially with that so you know if you've got slugs of work and I know a lot of people who use VAs for just their normal you know day-to-day -day production customer service and sales so um, yeah there's a, there's a lot of a lot of good reasons why you would want to do that Go ahead, Laura. I've also used Taskaway. Um, I've used a couple of other agencies as well before Taskaway existed, um, but definitely would recommend Taskaway. Um, but I think uh, VAs are fantastic for project work. That is my favorite use of VA. Um, I have used them to migrate between softwares. I have used them. Um, in takeovers of other companies. I have used them um, for customer service related projects, like calling a list of people to gain specific information from them. 
Um, I've had a little bit of experience with trying to use them as more of a, you know, person who answers the phone all the time kind of thing. And my sister who also owns a cleaning service has done the same thing. In my opinion, that is not as good of a use of a VA because they typically have multiple clients. And so unless you're going to hire them full time, it's hard to have them dedicated to you um, and be able to answer your phone all the time. Great for project work. Good thing you banked those extra seconds, Laura. That's what I was <laughs> You okay. still have 15 more to go. Time. So we're going to do Caleb's question. No, we won't. <laughs> How about best way to use social media? Lucia's question. Hmm. Great. That's a good question. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. It, Laura's up, right? Oh, she, yeah. Laura finished. Yeah. Oh. What? Oh. So who's up? Is it me? <laughs> when you go first, no, I. No, I started first. because it's you and then it's Laura. So it's you're up. Yeah. Right? Because I went and Laura finished. You went first, right, Liz? I went first. Yeah. yeah. So that means I go first this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Let's just go with that. It's good enough. Oh, yeah, let's do it. We're going in a circle. Why is this so hard? We all own successful companies. We can't figure out whose turn it is. It's your turn, Tom. <laughs> Social media is really a, a, a great way to tell your market about your business, you know, Picture's worth a thousand words, and I guess video is probably worth a million. And if you can get a lot of likes in your local market of, of you know, customers or prospective customers, you can basically build a relationship with with with, with your market through your your social media channels. Uh, you know, primarily Facebook and Instagram, I guess. I know some people do more on Twitter. Uh, we don't uh, spend a lot of time in that channel. Um, but it's just, a it's, it's an awesome way. And I mean, it takes time. I mean, you can promote, you know, your mark, you can promote, um, posts as well, but for the most part, it's just a way of, of sharing with the market. You ready, Laura? Yes. Is it Laura's turn now, Liz? Yes. I wrote it down, you guys, so we won't have this problem again. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I was not super good about social media for a really long time. Recently, I've gotten a lot more engaged in it. And I've decided that the reason that I felt like it didn't work for a long time is because I was talking at people. And I think the best use of social media is to talk with people. And so I use it as um, trying to make everybody feel like I'm their bestie. I try to be helpful. I try to have conversations that emotionally connect them to me in some way. Um, I just, yeah, I want everybody to feel like I'm their bestie and I'm there for them. And I found that I get a lot of, even if the people I'm engaging with on social media aren't hiring me directly, um, they're like my little army of word of mouth of this is such a great company. So um, I love engaging with people through FaceTime lives, through videos, through giveaways, through groups. <laughs> You ready, Liz? You kind of—I can't remember what's the name of Trisha Trisha's company. TLC. There you go. Thank you. All right, I'm ready now. <laughs> All right. So the best way—the best way to use um, social media—I'm not sure I have that exact answer, but I can tell you that the person that I know of that does the best job with um, social media marketing, especially Facebook, is Trisha Lake with TLC Cleaning. I think she's in Fargo, is that right? Or in North Carolina. Anyway, Tom will, Tom will probably pop it for us if he has a minute. Um, but the thing that she does is she keeps it real. She talks to her people similar to like Laura does. 
um, she just chats with them. She tells them about her family life. She tells them about everything. But then she also, while she's doing this, is selling them at the same time. So she's connecting and selling, connecting and selling. And she does a lot of um, community type things where she will engage the entire community and um, like different events that she's having. Oh, and Stephanie Nesset. What's the name of Stephanie's company? Absolutely. In Iowa. Absolutely clean. Yeah. Absolutely clean too. Places to check out and see what they're doing. So they do awesome stuff. If you see this number like down here where like 10,000 people have liked this page, I mean, that's a, <laughs> it, it, I mean, Fargo's, there's not a, there's not a, a large, there's not a huge city in North Dakota. Okay, I don't know how many people live in Fargo, but it's not a a really large place. Anyway, yeah, it's kind of a hint that people probably like the page. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one up is do you use Facebook ads in your business? And I'm up. Okay, so yes, I'm keeping track. I think. Um, uh, okay, Facebook ads, a very limited amount. Um, I have somebody that I, I pay to do some monthly ads, and she posts every single day. Oh, no, I'm sorry. She posts six days a week, and um, they're, they're more like an engaging ad. We, I don't have a really good sales strategy. You'll notice I didn't recommend that you check out my Facebook page for what's amazing with Facebook marketing. Um, so I, I use them, but not, not to any great degree. Dang. We have for finding both clients and uh, recruiting. Actually, we probably spend more time in Facebook uh, doing ads for recruiting than than, than we do um, clients. Um, we've also, uh, and this is kind of ebbs and flows, do the whole pixel thing on your, your website. And then when somebody goes to Facebook, your ads will stop popping up in their, their Facebook lead. Um, but that's, you know, not a perpetual thing. We, we do it and then we stop. It just um, depends upon what we're focusing on at that time. All right. So we're getting down to the wire. I know we want to try and get off here early today if we can, but we do have one more question and then I have one question Martin. online that I told you guys to ask. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God, I go. Did you write that down? Check your paper, Liz. Check your paper. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. All three of us get to answer. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Tom, for clarifying that for me. Laura, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so I've never been super consistent with Facebook ads, mostly because I don't have some of the technical skills for some of the things I would want to do with them. Um, kind of going along with the spending a higher percentage now that we've open, reopened from COVID, trying to kind of scoop up what's out there. Um, we have started doing it. I have hired someone to help me with that at this point. Most of our budget is going into remarketing um, using the Facebook pixel, like Tom mentioned. Um, we also boost most of our posts to $5 just to get a wider um, number of people seeing it. Um, but yeah, we are, we are starting to experiment a little bit more with it just because I truly think that now is the time to spend the money on marketing. If there's ever been a time, now is the time to market because you got to scoop up what's out there before they, before they finish getting scooped. So. Laura, since I tried to short you from any of your 60 seconds, you can have as many more seconds as you want. <laughs> <laughs> No limit on Laura's seconds now. So, uh, all right. We're we're down to about five minutes till the top of the hour. So nobody ask any more questions. We'll answer Jane's question 
And then I have this one question that I told you guys about. So let's try and get those done real quick. We can get them done in six minutes if we're fast okay. and we all we're, we're all quick. Okay, who's up? These are <laughs> check your list. Laura you just finished, which means you went first. So it's my turn now. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. No, we do not have pants as part. Well, it depends. We require our cleaning professionals to wear pants, but they provide their own pants. We don't provide it to them. Um, we provide, you know, company shirts, uh, apron. Um, we have some other swag hats and visors and stuff like that. But um, our cleaning professionals are responsible for providing their own pants. All right, we're gonna be fast. I uh, right after Tom is Laura. Laura. Uh, same as Tom. We do not provide pants. I'm also pretty lax about what they wear on bottom, honestly. Unless I can see their butt hanging out or they have major holes, I kind of let them wear whatever they're comfortable in because I think cleaning is, you know, it's a really physical job. Uh, so we provide t-shirts and aprons. Oops. Ready, Laura. Do provide pants. We get them from Uniform Advantage. Uh, they only get one pair, and if they want to buy more, they can. Um, that's it. Did you have one more question, Liz? I did. Laura, you're first up on it, but I gave everybody a heads up. What are you going to do if someone in your company gets COVID 19? That was the question. Okay. Tom's being nice to you and giving you a couple seconds to think while he types. I type. <laughs> Painfully. I forgot the question mark, but we get the point. You ready? Yeah, we know what it is. I'm ready. So thankfully, we have not had this happen yet, and I'm hoping that it will not since cases are fairly low in my county. Um, but most likely it will at some point, and we would just exclude them from work until two weeks after their symptoms had subsided, and we would notify everyone whose home they had been in in the last two weeks um, that they had been exposed. We do have a... Um, like we wear full PPE in all of our homes. We disinfect all the touch points. I told them we're effectively cleaning ourselves out of your house as we go. Um, so I do think that the risk to our clients is low of exposure through us, but I do think that it would be the only morally right thing to do would be to report and to, you know, take whatever comes with that. Um, I think that it's becoming so prevalent in our society though especially in areas that have more cases, I don't think that it would have a detrimental impact on business as long as we handle it appropriately. You ready, Liz? I am. All right. So um, I really love what you said, Laura, about we're effectively cleaning ourselves out of your house. I love that. I'm, I'm stealing that. Thank you for that. Um, so, I, gosh, I hope you don't think lesser of me since you said I would be morally corrupt for my my response. <laughs> so um, we also have not had this happen yet. Um, my, my plan for what I'm going to do is to look at um, every, all of the homes that they've been at. And anybody who has told us that they were at risk, had a concern, is elderly, we're going to call all those people. I don't really want to create... Um, any kind of more, and my thinking is any kind of more panic or make people more upset than they need to be. So, um, yeah, um, what Leslie said, call the local health department. Yeah, great, I, great idea too. That's my answer. I think a big part of, of the whole process is identifying people in your organization who might have symptoms or might have been exposed themselves because you, you know, you have to have symptoms or you have to be exposed before you ever become diagnosed. So you want to get ahead of it and, and, and know rather than no, no sign of anything and bang, all of a sudden somebody's diagnosed with COVID. They had to be sick, you know, 
prior to that. So we do uh, a four question survey every morning. Uh, we're doing temperature checks in the morning. Um, if somebody is diagnosed, um, we would do testing. Um, we do testing now. We're offering, I mean, we're encouraging our employees to, to uh, do testing within the community. There's a number of options and um, I'm out of time. I like the way he totally had time, but he did not want to answer. Well, I could, the other thought that I was going to share would have exceeded the amount of time that I had. And I know that's good time. frustrating because you wanted wanted to hear the last point and I wouldn't have shared <laughs> it with you because my time was out. You're so good, Tom. I'm going to give you a gold star today. I am going to give you a, a bonus piece of information, though. We found this to be useful. Uh, CDC gives some guidance as to, and this is what they call, um, you know, uh, critical infrastructure workers. It pertains to, you know, seniors and stuff like that, to caring for, 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 for seniors and, and hospitals, but it kind of gives you the protocol and what you're supposed to do. And if you're following all the PPP with the masks and so forth, if you're really religious about that, it really takes a lot of the onus off of you in terms of how you communicate with, with, with your clients and, you know, you're deemed to, it's not nearly as bad in the mitigation steps you have to do or nearly as onerous if you are following strict uh, PPP safety practices. So I dropped that link. Yeah. And I, I just want to follow up to that to say that that's why I don't believe that it's going to ultimately be, um, like something that's going to, you know, be business altering or ending if you do end up with an exposed worker, because if you can show that you're taking all the steps, the chances that you infect your clients are so, so slim. I mean, it just shows how responsible you're being. And I think it's also going to become a kind of a common thing that, you know, I mean, we had like Chick-fil-A and Walmart and, you know, everything breaking out around here. So I just, I don't think that it's as heavy as it feels. Okay, Laura, we are out of time. I, I'm shocked that our, we were stayed on this whole time. So, okay, you guys, you gave us questions all the way to the end. So we will be on next Friday for On The Spot. And I have a super exciting guest, maybe not as exciting as Laura, but super exciting anyway. And um, I promise you that it is a name you know, and that's gonna be all I'm gonna tell you for today, for next week, while Tom is pulling Do um, information. Do you want to go over time? Because I got this really cool deck that you sent me that I put together that I oh, should have okay. pulled up in. We're supposed to do it in the beginning. Tom, I'm so impressed you remembered. I did not remember. Okay, okay so well, double well. gold stars today. In this unprecedented time, I am so happy that you remember the important pieces. Well, it's not unprecedented, and it's not at all unprecedented that we kind of forgot to do this, but- No, uh, I, I were. Thanks, Brian. All right, so, all right, Tom, what'd you do here? This. Come on. He created us a new schedule, y'all. So you want to see what we're doing next week? He's going this to show us. Doing next week. <laughs> All right. What got here, Liz? So we've got Ryan Noel. I'm not going to share about him. Um, so um, SEO for the win with Ryan Noel. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about these um, um, guests that we have. You're going to have to be on the calls and see. Bye, Rosemary. Thank you. Um, Matt Ricketts, um, he's going to be talking to us uh, about the PPP, um, just giving us some updates. Yusuf uh, Memetoglu, hard name, uh, managing a large business during a pandemic. How big is his company, y'all? It's over $5 million a year out of one branch That's in Washington, D.C. Branch, y'all. So... Um, he's got a lot of great information. 
on Thursday, Chad and Diana Henley, uh, the value of diversification in tough times. They are a family owned business that also run a pest control company. And so a lot of good info there. And then our secret guest that I already gave you a cl clue about. That's it. We're really late today. Dang it. I'm Thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging in. Laura, thanks so much. You're awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Laura. Really appreciate it. Thanks you so much. You guys have a safe weekend. Get some rest. Be back here Monday, 5 o'clock. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye y'all.